Over the last three weeks, through Pastor Seth's messages, we have sought, we have found, and we finally get it. So now what? Now we have to refocus and reboot ourselves and put all this stuff into practice. It's time to live it. It's time to be the new people that God has created in us. If you've ever been to a church wedding in any denomination, odds are you've heard a reading from 1 Corinthians 13, Paul detailing what is love. And for many who have heard or read it, this passage is the perfect definition of love. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. This whole book was written to the Greek Christians in Corinth. The Greeks known to be quite intelligent and quite analytical. Paul always targeted his office audience, writing in the manner in which he would be understood by that select group. Well, a couple of years later, Paul wrote a different letter to a different group. The letter to the Romans was written both to Jews and Gentiles in Rome. The themes and instructions are similar, but the writing in Romans is a little more down to earth, a little more detailed, and it expands on the thoughts in Corinthians. And it is our custom to read scripture together. So it's going to be on the screen behind me and it's in your bulletin. Love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eye of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, open our ears, our eyes, and our minds to all you have to teach us, that we may become the people you want us to be. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Have you ever heard the phrase, almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades? Well, you know, horseshoes, if it's close, 
Sometimes you get a point. If it's leaning, you get more. It doesn't have to be a ringer. And in hand grenades, all you got to do is get it close to your target because it'll blow up enough that it works. Almost in everything else in life doesn't cut it. You're either in or you're out. There's no in-between in life, especially in Christianity. Wesley spoke of being an almost Christian. It's not pretty. Because when you really look at it, almost might apply to most of us. Even Wesley felt it described him. Are you honest? Are you truthful? Do you help others? Do you help others by giving your leftovers? Or are you intentional about giving good things? Did you ever see the muffin episode of Seinfeld? You know how the best part of a muffin is the top? Where all the, sh the, the caramelized sugar is? the crunchy dome with the soft inside, you tear it off and it is the best part. Well, that episode dealt with giving muffins to the homeless. But the givers separated the top, the good part, from what they called the stumps, the part with the paper on it, keeping the good parts for themselves an advocate for the homeless in refusing the stumps, and by the way, not even the garbage men would take the stumps. But the advocate makes a statement, and I can't recall it exactly, but it was something on the order of, the homeless deserve the good parts too. Somehow I feel that both Wesley and Paul would have approved of that episode, even though it was about nothing but that was the whole of the series. Anyway, Wesley's almost Christian keeps the Ten Commandments. He doesn't swear, he doesn't lie, doesn't cheat, doesn't gossip, isn't a drunk, tries to live peaceably with all, follows the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Okay, I think nobody here has murdered anybody, right? Maybe a fly. A spider? Yeah. So, so far, we're okay. The almost Christian evangelizes, works to help others find faith, spreads the gospel, attends church, pays attention in giving full devotion to worship, approaches Holy Communion reverently. The almost Christian prays, is totally sincere and for all intents and purposes looks as though he or she is what you would define to be a good Christian. Wesley knew that. He saw that. But he said, you know, there's still something missing. In fact, at points in his life, it was missing from his life. So he speaks from experience. And maybe it's missing from our lives as well. What is it that moves us from almost Christian to all in Christian? What tips the balance on the scales? It's the total love and commitment to God. Scripture says you shall love you, the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Think about it. Heart, soul, mind, strength. That's loving God with every fiber of your being, wanting nothing as much as him. That's devotion. That's worship. That's pure love. He then talks about loving others and its necessity. 
When you love God so deeply, the love spills over to loving others. Your heart is so full, it runs over. Like, like when you select the wrong size cup on the Keurig, and it, it, it's all over the floor, it's a mess. Well, when your love spills over, you don't make a mess. You make friends. And you show your love to other people. But the one thing to remember is you can't pick who to love. Remember, love your neighbor as yourself. And who is your neighbor? Your neighbor is everyone. Your neighbor's a Democrat. Your neighbor's a Republican. Your neighbor's gay, straight, black, Asian, atheist, immigrant, Muslim, homeless, mentally ill, handicapped, addict, ex-spouse, the person you're mad at. Your neighbor is everyone. The latest issue of Guideposts has a quote from a pastor named Rick Reynolds. He says, if you love only those people who are like you, who have the same values, the same economic and educational background, you're not really doing much except loving yourself. Think about it. God loves everyone, not just the people you get along with. Do you remember Steve Hodges? What a neat guy. I don't know if you know this, but Steve was brought up in a Salvation Army home and was a big fan of the founder of Salvation Army, whose name was William Booth. And Steve was proud to tell you of the story of the day that Mr. Booth delivered a one-word sermon. There was a huge buildup, you know, he was the honored guest at a, at a service. And they, you know, gave all his backstory and really built him up. And he stood up and he said, others. And he sat down. That was his one word sermon. And that was Steve Hodges' lapel pin, was others. Put others before yourself. Help others. Love others as you love yourself. Treat others with gentleness, kindness, decency. We don't need to study more to be nice. We just need to share the love of God and the love of Jesus to everybody. We need to move that head knowledge that we're full of about 12 inches south and make it heart knowledge. We are called to be like Christ, to take care of the least, the last, and the lost. Do you really get what that means? The least is the person who's shy, who has no power, who has no friends or nobody to talk to, the least is the person who doesn't have it all together. The last, the person who is picked last or never picked at all for a sports team, a committee, or to be a friend. The last one in the back row, the last person you would want to be seen with. And the lost, those with no hope, no friends, no life. If you've never been an outsider, you have no clue of the hurt felt every day by these people, by many of you in this room, and by lots of people out in the world. 
Compassion for all is vital. Love must be sincere. Not for show, not to get your pictures in the paper, not because you're head of a committee, and not because it's the cause of the week, but because you really care about that person or group and want to help them. As Psalm 51 says, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. Love with a pure heart, no ulterior motives, just the love of Christ. Jesus loves you so much, he gave his life for you. And God loves you so much that he let him do it. Love them back by loving all persons. Find someone different to talk to during fellowship time. Someone older, someone younger, someone who doesn't look like you. We're all works in progress. But we have to work at this love thing. It may not come easily. Some people are porcupines. You know what that means? You get near them, they throw their quills at you. Now, not literally, but figuratively. Some people are that hard to love. They resist others, and some people just want to be left alone. But we're here on this earth for each other, to love, to help, to care for each other. It's work, but it can be the most satisfying job you'll ever do. I know. You're saying, ah, oh, we've heard all this before. But it's more important than ever. There's more hatred in this world, not just in this country, in this world, than we have ever seen. We have to live in the hope that we have, that we can all be one. We need to embrace that hope. And we need to embrace each other. Love is the way to fight the evil that is around us. Put God first. Put others ahead of your own needs and desires. God is here. He's in the middle of all of this. He was in the middle of that synagogue yesterday. He loves each and every person, for we are his. And he wants us to get along. He wants us to be there for each other, to be his hands and feet on this earth. Share him. Share God. Share Jesus with others. And share yourself with others. To paraphrase the words of Ram Das, we're all here to walk each other's each other home. If you take nothing else with you today, remember this: we're here to walk each other home. Home to our Father.